Hey gang, before we go any further today, let me tell you about one of my other favorite marketing podcasts. I think you're really going to enjoy. Believe it or not, it's a fun and funny podcast about email marketing. It's called The Email Marketing Show. They recently did an amazing episode called Six Lies Your Email Marketing Platform is Telling You, which I loved because these guys are so genuine and real in their opinions about what's working and what doesn't in email marketing today. You should definitely check them out by finding The Email Marketing Show wherever you get your podcasts or at emailmarketingheroes.com. This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast. I waxed poetic a couple of weeks back about the metaverse. It is part of the larger grouping of new technologies and opportunities that fall under the umbrella of Web 3.0. The metaverse, which is largely virtual worlds, is all about experiences. Then you have cryptocurrency, which my best explanation of this is the coins and virtual currencies you might be used to earning in video games only they're tied to real market value and actual financial markets and exchanges, which gives them real-world value. Crypto can be exchanged for actual dollars. When we talk about crypto, we're talking about Bitcoin or Ethereum. Those are at least two of the largest cryptocurrencies, but there are hundreds. You can even sign up for your own personalized cryptocurrency and dole it out to people as a reward, let's say. Yes, it costs real money to have some crypto money, But the volatility of the crypto market means you could see the value of, say, $100 in crypto one day suddenly be several hundred the next day. Now, there's no guarantee, of course, and that value can also go the other way, too. For the record, I have invested exactly $50 in cryptocurrency to date. It is currently valued at $28, so I'm not convinced. And then there are NFTs. Just the thought of those give me a headache, and I'm not the only one. And those headaches are exactly why Joseph Jaffe is here today. Frankly, it's why Joseph Jaffe exists. He is a forward thinker, an innovator, a change agent. He wrote a book called Join the Conversation before brands were echoing that mantra about social media. And he's at it again. Jaffe has pulled together a collection of Web 3.0 thinkers into a new premium community called the Alpha Collective. It's a limited capacity, paid membership community that will feature weekly lectures to help members wrap their heads around succeeding in Web 3.0 business and technology. But each member will have direct access to each of the speakers and other experts in the community for networking, Q&A, potential consulting, and the like. And the weekly lectures will be live, so there will be direct interaction with all of these expert folks. The name Alpha Collective implies you'll get to see some things before everyone else does. And that's the point. If you or your business wants to be on the forefront of Web 3.0 success, whether you're a brand or an influencer, you should pay close attention today. Joseph Jaffe himself is coming up on Winfluence. Some housekeeping before we get to that, however. I told you a few weeks ago I'm speaking at the Influencer Marketing Show in New York City on April 27th, and I have a discount code for you to get tickets to join me there. IMS has been held in London the past few years. I've been honored to be an MC and moderator for the last two events as they were virtual. Now, IMS is not only back to IRL, but it's here in the United States for the first time. It's a one-day event in New York City just off Broadway at the New World Stages on West 50th. It will be Wednesday, April 27th, 2022, coming up in just a few short weeks. I will be chairing one of the stages as well as moderating a panel for my friends at Taggart. They are the presenting sponsor of this podcast and one of the sponsors for IMS. Go see the full speaker and topic lineup and get your tickets at jason.online slash IMS Falls. That's jason.online slash IMS Falls. The IMS, of course, short for Influencer Marketing Show and Falls being my last name. You know that. And when you check out, use the code FALLS, all caps, F-A-L-L-S, and get a 15% discount 
just for listening to Winfluence. Again, the URL, jason.online slash IMS Falls, and use the code FALLS, all caps, to get 15% off your ticket to join me in New York City, April 27th, for the Influencer Marketing Show. The Alpha Collective is going to take 1,000 people and get them ready for Web 3.0. Learn more about it so you can be one of them. Joseph Jaffe is next on Winfluence. Hey there, it's Jason Falls. If your company or maybe one of your clients sells to marketers, you look for advertising channels that guarantee business marketers are paying attention, right? Let me introduce you to the Marketing Podcast Network. You're listening to it right now. It's a network of podcasts all about marketing. So 100% of MPN's audience are marketers. Reach them by advertising on the Marketing Podcast Network. Learn more and find our media kit at marketingpodcasts.net. So uh, Joseph Jaffe has started yet another thing. Uh, This one, though, um, is turning some uh, heads and raising some eyebrows. Uh, Joe, tell us about the Alpha Collective. What is it? So, you know, one of the things that's interesting is, uh, I don't know if this is just a Web3 thing, uh, but certainly we hear this in in the entertainment world is to describe this as a project. Okay. I kind of like that. I like this idea of being able to talk about things as projects as opposed to my new gig or as opposed to I'm working for this company. I just think that's a, like a much better, healthier way to think about life, career, you know, um, productivity, adventure, however you want to call it. So the genesis behind this is – I've been living a personal hell for two years uh, called COVID, which apparently everyone else has been living as well. <laughs> and that's a and, that's a genuine Joe Jaffe response right there. I like that. <laughs> yeah, and and you know, a, apparently after two years, it's important to start earning revenue. Uh, <laughs> I read that in a book somewhere in a fortune cookie, um, but. You know, I I really dived or dove into this Web3 world almost unintentionally when I got my Jaffe coin, my creator coin on on Rally.io's network or platform. I honestly had heard of Bitcoin vaguely, but I I knew nothing else. And and as I went deeper and deeper and deeper, I, I really found it very hard to resist the lure of everything under this umbrella called Web3. And now today we talk about NFTs and blockchain, creator coins, metaverse. I mean, you name it. It's a whole litany um, of of opportunity. And I was sitting on my bed on a Saturday afternoon uh, a while ago, and Kevin Rose, the Kevin Rose, the great Kevin Rose, launched this initiative called Proof Collective, and uh, an art collective, a private club or private. Uh, Discord focusing on, I guess, art, you know, on artists, NFT artists, real artists, um, which is not to say NFT artists are not real artists. I mean, IRL artists. And um, and I just watched and I took note. He was, he was using a Dutch auction and he sold out within two hours because he's Kevin Rose. And, and I calculated how many passes were sold and how much money he made. And, and, uh, and I thought to myself, this is the new business model. This is the new business model in Web3, which is to use an NFT that can trade on the secondary market that is transferable, that is sellable, um, that that has a value that changes based on the perceived value that members and people that are outside feel. And uh, And I thought to myself, you know, like I, when I look back on my career, I've seen the broken record play out time and time again, the broken record that is Groundhog Day, that is what it is to be a brand from, from digital to social to mobile to, you know, collaborating with startups now to Web3. And it's the same broken record. Gartner called it the hype curve. You know, um, some, some of them rush in gung-ho. They're filled with arrogance and hubris. We can do this ourselves. We'll build it ourselves. Our agency will do this for us, you know, no agency can do it except for yours, Jason. That's the truth. <laughs> um, but 
And, and, and then typically what happens is they lose interest, they lose patience, their chairman loses patience, they get burnt, they don't see immediate results, and they run away, they scuttle away with their tail between their legs, and then they don't come back. And they hide in the corner, and guess what? Time passes them by, life passes them by, and they get left behind. And so you have this, like what I'm calling now brand FOMO, which is, I don't want to miss out. I don't want to miss it again. I don't want to make a mistake. I don't want to lose my job. I don't want to get burnt. I don't want to be slaughtered by, you know, the, the, the Jaffies and the Falls out there. We don't do that anymore because we're nice people. Um, and, and so there's so much of this negativity uh, in the business. And, and I wanted to change that. I wanted to be a part of the solution as opposed to the problem. I wanted to, I've always believed in, in, in practicing what I preach, walking the talk as it were. And so I said, I set out to, you know, build a collective, a premium community centered and focused around the business of Web3. You know, not, not what's the next great NFT collection, um, but the business side, the brand side of Web3, because it is a real business opportunity on so many levels. Remember, and I mean, you know this, that Greg Vadino, who's one of the co-founders, Greg and I, we've forgotten more about Second Life <laughs> than, than most of these so-called metaverse leaders uh, have yet, you know, know or, or will ever acquire. I mean, we were living it. We, we built the island. We, we had a premiere in, you know, in, uh, in our movie theater. We, we interviewed people um, in our diner. We, we, we were living this amazing uh, but primitive version of the metaverse. And so this time around, I don't want to be a spectator myself. And so what I did was, you know, through FOJ, Friends of Joe, um, because, you know, the thing is what people still don't realize in this space is that the metaverse may be virtual, but the relationships and the connections are very, very real, very real. And, um, and so I just, you know, I went and found um, a group of people, some of which I've never met IRL, some of which I've worked with before, like Greg Vadino or Faith James, who was my first boss at Ogilvy. And we set out to build this, this collective, this uh, collective that we call the Alpha Collective. Um, we're going to be selling a thousand membership passes. I'll, I'll, you know, stop in a second and see if, and turn it back to you, but it will be a thousand membership passes that will give uh, access for a full year. Um, and our goal is to help our members uh, unlock the value and opportunities of the business of Web3, just as simple as that. All right. So let me, let me spit this back at you a little bit and make sure that I, I understand what you're, what it is, uh, because my job here, I think, is to kind of translate everything to those who maybe don't know what Web3 is or aren't as immersed in it as you are. So what you have done is you have started a community that uh, people, you're going to have a thousand people will be able to buy into this community. So it's a premium community. You have to subscribe to it, pay for it, whatever. And in that community, you're going to have, as I understand it, a series of lectures, seminars, webinars, con mini conferences, content from you know people weekly that are experts in various and sundry areas of Web3. Uh, so it might be NFTs, might be blockchain, crypto, et cetera. It might be the metaverse. And you're not only going to be providing them with content, but you've also got that community aspect of you're going to be there as a resource to connect people, consult with people, et cetera. Does that summarize it pretty well? I say we can end this interview right now ah. and, uh, you know, give give this man a prize. <laughs> well, um, give this, give this man a trophy. I've been paying attention. You know, you, you did your, your your live thing. The day that we're recording this, you did a live thing with the, the, the founders, with Rodino and Fanzo and Faith and all that today. And I listened in because I'm really trying to get my head wrapped around it. I still haven't completely gotten my head wrapped around all of the elements of Web3. And I do want to talk to you about a couple of them. But I'm glad that I was able to translate that because that's what I heard that the, you know, basically if I'm translating that into what everybody can understand, hey, this is a premium community. You're going to have great connections. You're going to have great contacts, resources uh, to understand more, but you're also going to have the learning. Networking, connections, collaborations. Um, what we are doing is building this bridge between what we call, 
you know, executives and entrepreneurs, really what we mean are corporates and, and you know, DGENs from the crypto world. You know, so you've, you've got your thought leaders, your freelancers, your, you know, solo entrepreneurs on the one side, you've got your big corporates, but, but you know, one, one side may end up working with, for an individual, a group with the other side. That's the kind of connections we want to make. And, and the other thing is, you know, the key word here is access. It's access and shared ownership. You want to know about Web3? That's what it is. It's access, utility, I guess, access and utility, shared ownership, which is that which is the fact that you are buying into something and 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 that has value. It's not like I bought my ticket and you know I, I dozed off during the lecture. I'm not really sure I remember anything. It it doesn't work that way because you own a piece of that. Um so the it's access to the founders, it's access to each other. And then what you were alluding to is something that we think is fairly landmark. We're calling them alpha talks. 52 of these talks over 52 weeks by 52 speakers many of which we know we 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 know personally we love we you know from Charlene Lee to Mitch Joel to David Miam and Scott to Mark Schaefer um and more i mean there's so many that are planned we are you know this whole thing is about alpha and i can talk about that later what alpha is but here's a bit of alpha which is we're trying to and we will try hard and harder. And if we don't succeed, then someone can tell us we should have tried harder to end up with 26 males and 26 females. Okay. Because you can talk about diversity, equity, and inclusion, or you can actually try and do something about it. So that's what we're trying to do is to make sure that that we are, um, you know, there's so many ways as well, you know, we can still come up short by just focusing on 26 males and 26 females. It's obvious you know, when we think about that, it's, and it can drive you, it, 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 it's almost an impossible task. It's a, it's a, it's a goalpost that, that will keep on moving, but you have to start somewhere and you've got to be accountable. Um, and so that's one thing that we're trying to do. And, and the alpha talk, the way, the way the alpha talk will be structured, 20 minutes of it will be a keynote. 10 minutes of it will be a curated Q and A between a founder and the keynoter. And then 30 minutes will be full access, all access, town hall discussion between members and that person. Now, that person is not going to leave after that. It's not I showed up at the conference and then I left and my handlers whisked me out. They're members for the full year as well. We're giving them a membership. And we hope that they're going to stick around, not only in terms of that hour, but even participating in, in daily a AMAs, et cetera. So we've got a lot planned. And as uh, Gregarious Narain, one of the founders, uh, said today, we've purposefully made sure that we are not in the under or over promise business. So we're trying to, instead of coming out guns a blazing, here are the 58,000 benefits we've just focused on now on a private discord, on IRL meetups, you know, uh, so events in the real world and these 52 alpha talks. Okay. So I understand, and I think everybody out there can understand the value. You're going to get great content. You're going to get great networking, great connections. Let's dig into the the first part of, of my getting into the weeds with you on this is the cost of membership. And I'm not, I'm not complaining about the price tag because I understand the dollar value and the actual benefits you get out of it are far exceed the value of going to a conference and whatnot. So the, the price tag but, but I want to talk to you about how people can understand what the price tag is because the entry fee is what? So the entry fee is one ETH. Okay, so and one ETH. When you say that, I think you've, you've gotten something stuck in your teeth and, and, and you, you're choking and I need to do something to dislodge something from your throat. What the hell is an ETH? Well, listen, uh, I said ETH, not teeth. And if it was singular, then it would be tooth or ooth. <laughs> <laughs> so one, so one ETH, right. two ETH. So give me, so, an, give me an ETH. What's an ETH? All right. So on the Ethereum blockchain. That I a, understand. Okay. Is a currency not – so this is not Ethereum. ETH is not sure. ETH is called ETH. ETH is a currency uh, that trades on and operates on and in the Ethereum blockchain. Okay. So right now, one ETH 
has a value of about th- just under $3,000. Here's the crazy part. Two weeks ago, it was $2,500. And so there is volatility. And, and I, I, like, I'm going to be honest with you. I really wanted and I still want to open up minting when ETH is low. Sure. Because I don't need ETH to be at $4,000. I don't want it to be. I want people to come in at the most affordable level possible. And the thing is, all things being equal, two things happen over the course of the next, actually three things happen over the course of the next year. One is the price of ETH is going to fluctuate. It might go to 5,000. It might go to 6,000. It might go to 4,000. You know, as we say in the business, not financial advice, do your own research. Or fans, I would say, do your own damn research. But it could also drop to 2,000. The other thing that will happen is the floor price of a membership pass will change based on supply and demand. And so Kevin Rose's Proof Collective, most of them sold at one ETH. About 680 of the 1,000 sold at one ETH. Right now, the floor price is 30 ETH. Wow. 30 ETH. Here's the crazy part. 30 ETH is insane, right? Yeah. But going back to the price for a second, I can tell you that my rate card right now, if you wanted to book me to speak, is a lot higher than one ETH. So, so that's that's how we looked at it. We looked at it saying saying that not only are you buying access to the founders, the Alpha Talk speakers, etc., but you can actually sell this ticket should you choose to. Yeah, there there is some some inherent value uh, beyond what you get in terms of content and networking in the purchase of the ticket alone because it is transferable. You can sell it to someone else. If the value of an ETH goes up or the floor price goes up, you can potentially profit from this, which is an interesting kind of a sidebar, not, not necessarily something I'm focused on. But I think the reason I asked that question the way I asked it is because one of the, I think, initial hurdles – for people to get over when thinking about Web3 is why do I have to learn new currencies and new terminology? Why can't you just put a dollar amount on something? It's such a great question. And and the answer is for someone like yourself and myself, we've lived through all of, you know, the broken record again. Why do I have to, you know, all these social media terms, all of these new ways or lingo you know, I mean, this is just, this is progress. Progress says that the world changes. And if we don't unlearn that which doesn't work anymore as well as it used to and and either relearn or learn new words, vernacular, um, we're going to be left behind. But at the same time, when Pepsi did their mic drop on, you know, most brand activations with NFTs have been just absolute Surprise, surprise, here's a shocker, uh, abysmal failures. So I remember Pepsi put out a tweet and they said, like, GM friend, like friend. And, and so GM is, is short for talk about lingo or good morning. And friends, you know, in the D, DGen friends is known as a friend, F-R-E-N. But when Pepsi said, hello, friend, and by the way, they were talking to another brand at the time. It was so cringy, as my kids would say, that I actually like, I was ready to cash out and, you know, I mean, without cash, I was going to decash out. Um, So, so the thing is, I mean, it's, it's such a good question. Here's what we're doing. And and we haven't really publicly spoken about this either. One of the things for, you know, the concept of alpha in the web three space is information that you're getting before anybody else that you're getting early, that a small group of people are getting relatively early on. That is, in the old, in the old world, is known as competitive advantage. You know? and, so, and so that's all we're doing. We're trying to help our members win at the business of Web3. So here's what we're doing. You're going to be able to buy a pass at either one ETH or using fiat, which, by the way, is a new term for people. It's not a car. Fiat means money. It means credit card. It means cash. 
and it's going to be more than the equivalent of one ETH, um, a fair amount more. So there is a premium price. Why? Because credit card charges, the 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 pains of centralized payment conversion from from fiat to ETH, um, and the fluctuation of ETH. Because ETH is going to, you know, ETH, if ETH rises to to six thousand dollars, then fiat will be cheaper. So we are we are looking to sell via fiat for five thousand dollars. It is more yeah, at the moment, but you know we feel very comfortable. It's not a penalty. It's not a penalty. If anything, it is a, you get a discount by buying with and through crypto, and 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 part of what we're doing. And and I've always lived my life this way uh, professionally, especially with social media. The best way to understand change is to be a part of it. So so it, you know if a brand says we don't know how to buy crypto, we can help them. We can talk to them. We can steer them in the right direction. That already makes them a winner based on the fact that they're a lot further than they would have been had they been you know commenting on the sidelines. You know. And, 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 you know, Jason, I, I just want to say, like, I remember, I remember where I was exactly. It was in a conference room that, that we were renting from an agency during the crayon days. And I remember talking to a reporter that ended up writing what a, what a hit job on Second Life and on Virtual Worlds. And I remember saying to them, you, you're definitely bearish on this. And, and they were veiling, you know, they were very deceptive in terms of what their intent was when they interviewed me. But I remember saying to them, um, so how much time have you actually spent in Second Life? And what did they say to me? None. Oh, I haven't been in Second Life. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, it's very easy to tell when someone is commenting, you know, it's the it's the right click on a JPEG argument. It's the... I don't care if you had peanut butter and jelly, a jelly sandwich for for breakfast. You know, uh, argument that was made for Twitter. I mean, that's why I said it's a broken record. So I'm kind of sick and tired of having to, you know, to to listen to the broken record. I'd much rather download that song from Apple Music or Spotify. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I do. Well, there's obviously a lot uh, of education to be had, and I'm glad that you are collecting people who can uh, provide that. I, you know, for for what it's worth, you know, I feel like I'm a complete novice uh, when it comes to Web3, even though I've been sort of immersing myself in it and trying to understand it. I, I understand it from a philosophical standpoint, but I'm having a lot of trouble kind of wrapping my head around, okay, first of all, I have to translate money into ETHs or some other type of currency that I don't understand, nor do I understand how that market fluctuates. I don't know what the true value of that is when I'm trying to exchange it for goods, purchase NFTs, et cetera. NFTs is an entire other thing that I'm trying to wrap my head around and say like, okay, what is the point here? And so for someone out there who is at a brand, who understands that, you know, just endemically understands we have to be involved here. We can't be sitting by the sidelines, but they also have the same types of just cloudy, murky objections. What's your pitch to them to be a part of the Alpha Collective? Why should CMO A join this if they're like, dude, you're talking a different language and I don't have the time or patience to get to, to understand it? I think that's that's the answer because, dude, you don't have the time <laughs> or patience to be able to understand it. Um, you know, it, it's the it's the save you time, save you money, putting you first. I mean, it's it's the it's the ability to not waste time and to be able to have access to people that actually can, you know, can brainstorm, strategize, help you, you know, a variety of ways. Look, there are only uh, we say there are only a thousand passes. That is not a lot when you think about the fact that there are probably over a thousand marketers that work at P&G, let alone people in supply chain, in R&D, in innovation, you know, in, in the C-suite. We're, we're actually trying to cap how many companies can, can buy, uh, I mean, how many passes a company can buy because, because it, it doesn't it, it you know I'm using PNG as an example. It's just a random example. It doesn't help PNG to buy a thousand passes, and it doesn't help us either. It doesn't help our members. 
it helps PNG to buy three or four passes, you know, and, and, you know, like I was saying, even to you, whether, whether it's the agency, whether it's you individually as well, um, one is fine because you can take all that information back and you can be the conduit, um, or the portal, you know, so going back to that question, why should I, you know, what, uh, for all the reasons, the brand FOMO, et cetera, but I think fundamentally, you know, Greg would tell you everything begins and ends with strategy. And so I remember Rex Briggs standing on stage at a Microsoft Strategic Account Summit, and he stood up and he pointed his finger, and everyone looked at him, and he said, no, don't look at, don't look at the finger. Look at where the finger's pointing. So last night, I was in a space, and I spoke about just two very interesting use cases. One is the holy grail for all marketers and brands, which is this idea of a universal customer ID. I believe that can and will be delivered, you know, through the blockchain, you know, in, in this environment. That's the first. You connect your wallet and everything is unified and everything is aggregated and prioritized. The second I actually wrote about in 2010. This is the craziest thing. Talk about, you know, being prophetic. I mean, <laughs> I wrote Flip the Funnel. And in Flip the Funnel, I spoke about this concept called universal currency. And I said, every brand will have its own, I don't know if I use the word token or coin, but I certainly use the word currency. Why currency? Because currency has a market value, a swap value. It can be bought, sold, exchanged, swapped, redeemed, held, gifted um, for priceless experiences. I had, you know, I, I said Nike will have a swoosh and Coke will have a ribbon, but I had no idea that crypto would be the vehicle to deliver. And I had no idea that Joseph Jaffe, the not famous talk show host, would have, a, would have universal currency, the Jaffe coin, before these brands would. But the fact is that it's already here. And so why, why I'll just take it one step further, why is currency important? Well, if, if you're H&M, for, I'll give you just a simple example. If you hold a certain amount of of H and M, you know, or Target bullseyes, or whatever you want to call it. What if you could actually enter the store ten minutes before everyone else mm-hmm. on Black Friday? Black Friday exists anymore. What if you would have the, the equivalent of a whitelist or pre-sale access to something before anyone else? You don't have to guess. It's all verified and validated through a smart contract on the blockchain. So whether you're showing an NFT. That that you know my uh, what's it my name is my identity what is that movie my voice is my my voice is my is my footprint verify me I forget <laughs> what movie that was like Mission Impossible or something um, so so whether it's the NFT or it's just the ability to determine what level of coin you own and the thing about coin Jason is that it's not just about I bought X from you. It's actually I created content for you. I answered someone's question. It's it's what I wrote about in the book, the three C's, content, commerce, and commendations. The commendation is a rating, a review, a testimonial, et cetera. So when you actually look at engagement and loyalty, you know, it, it is so much more than how much SH1T did you buy from me, you know? And so those are just two, I mean, if your head is hurting, my head is hurting even thinking about it. But but these are the kinds of conversations that I hope will 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 come to the forefront in this collective, as opposed to, hey, we want to launch a ten thousand peer, you know, ten thousand piece PFP. Here's the thing. Brands are not cool. They're not cool. They're not as cool as they once were, and they're not as cool as as they think they are. That doesn't mean they can't be. But, but, you know, the ability to launch a vanity PFP collection without utility, you don't need to do that. What you need to do is to listen. And that's why these alpha talks are powerful because they're 20 minutes and they're all archived. And the thing is, they don't even have to be about Web3. They can be about storytelling. They can be about creativity. They can be about accountability. They can be about resilience. What we will do then is, is the translation is the 10-minute um, founder interview with them. And we're going to be bringing aboard Alpha Talk speakers. 
that actually think Web3 is the devil. So we're going to have people come out saying you're all basically losers and going to hell, and here's why. <laughs> that's that's perspective and debate. Yeah, that, you know, so, so why should it just be boosters? I'll, I'll sign up for one of those. I'm not nearly as volatile as you guys are all going to hell, but I'm I'm still kind of standing here going, wait a minute. The one thing that that that, and we don't need to necessarily get into this, but the one thing that I typically have to say about people who are are bullish on crypto is. At some point, the IRS is going to figure that out and you're going to be crushed because if you are stockpiling value income of any kind in some sort of, you know, cryptocurrency somewhere and the IRS figures it out, you're going to owe taxes and that's going to hurt if you're not careful. Yeah, well, listen, the, the, the thing that I forgot to mention is that when you do go to hell, you'll use your NFT as, as, your, as your membership pass to get in. <laughs> You know, or hopefully they'll say, "Sorry, you're actually going to heaven." Oh, nice. um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, it it, it is scary, and and the, it's so funny, you know, Jason, because ultimately bodies, whether it's the government, whether it's you know, whether it's a corporation, individuals, they're all basically motivated by two things, which are in fact the same thing, which is how much of my cash cow am I going to lose, or how much gold in them the hills can I gain. <laughs> So, so on one hand, you've got these two unbelievable forces. One is I don't want to lose my equity from from the status quo, and the which is currency, right? Which is the centralized central banks, right? And and everything about the controlled, you know, the controlled financial system. But on the other hand, you've got the promised land of of taxation and all these new taxable events. We're seeing governments. Uh, I mean, we're not we're, but like. We're seeing more, let's say, let's say more, uh, more uh, groundswell with respect to governments getting into crypto than running away from it, which means that they believe that they can make more money from moving forward than they would be by kind of, you know, through regulation and through uh, holding on to the past. And, and look, I mean, it, it hasn't worked out super brilliant for them yet, but, but but the entire, uh, you know, um, I think El Salvador uh, has now made one of their official currencies is Bitcoin. I think they bought it just before, like, the value decrease, but still. But, yeah, I mean, El Salvador, the official, you know, one of the official currencies is Bitcoin. You know, and, and we've already seen, you know, Visa and MasterCard um, doing interesting things um, in terms of being able to pay with crypto. I have a Coinbase debit card. That allows me when I pay in cash, it's a debit card. When I pay in cash, I get 1% back in crypto. And when I pay in crypto, I pay 1% service charge, but I'm actually paying for real product, goods, pizza, whatever in crypto. And I'll tell you that my kids laughed at me, laughed at me. I was, I was even more of a joke in my family than, than, <laughs> than, than I already was. You know, and so you know what I did as I started every week um, depositing Jaffe Coin into their account, uh, into an account that I opened for each one of them and my wife. And one day they looked at it and they were like, "Holy, you know, bleep!" And they saw what, what, and they saw that the value associated with that coin. And suddenly they're not as skeptical as they used to be. And I'm telling you this now that I believe, I believe with all my heart. You know, that my kids will buy their first car that's not from us or their first house um, or pay off student loans, or whatever the case may be, with this crypto. Now, it is volatile. Do your, you know, do your own research, not financial advice, uh, you know, but, but even within any ecosystem, you've got your stable coin, Bitcoin, and then you've got these altcoins, Dogecoins. The, the further away you move from the middle, the more risky it's going to be. And it is risky. And there's, by the way, there is a lot of stuff that is not great about the space. There is a lot of fraud and scams and rug pulls and FUD, as they call it, which is, which is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Um, but, and it is the wild, it is the wild, as, as I explained it today, it's the wild west, which they used to call digital except in this case, like every second person is a bandit that's going to basically <laughs> rob the stagecoach. 
So, you know, it, it's it's not for everybody, but that's why we have this collective, which is to ask the questions now. It is a safe place, a safe space. Part of the reason why it's closed, where people can actually ask the questions and they can say, for, for the first year, we're just going to learn, learn from others, you know, gather all the information and then figure it out. So assuming uh, that there are people out there, and I know there are, who want to be in that sort of safe space for the first year, where do people go to find out more about the Alpha Collective and potentially join? So our website is alphacollective.xyz, and there's actually a place to provide uh, to provide your email address. We are giving away a pass every week. So every week we're giving away a, essentially one ETH. Um, until such time that we've launched and until such time that we uh, have minted out or, you know, we're well on our way towards minting out. And, um, you know, it's one way to, and and by the way, <laughs> the tactic is called, it's called Legion and it was around before Web3, <laughs> you know. So by emailing people and telling them, guess what, minting is open. Um, but but I mean, that's the point, Jason. It's like It's like the best of the old, the best of the new. And um, also, one of the real reasons, another reason to provide an email address is that every week we announce another four to eight uh, Alpha Talk speakers. So this week, as in today, we announced uh, two new marketers. They they just graduated, uh, Mitch Joel and Mark Schaefer. <laughs> maybe maybe you've heard of them uh, and another another newbie Charlene Lee oh, wow. uh, and and Jessica joins and so every week another four names another four names um and and we're you know we're super excited we we're also calling the first year season 1 which implies that there's a season 2 uh which implies more members which implies more alpha talk speakers which implies more benefits um, and, and we hope this is the beginning of something very, very special. If it is, I'm glad our folks on Winfluence know about it and can jump in and join. Joe, thanks for continuing to innovate and bring people along with you. I appreciate you being here. Well, I thank you for the opportunity, and I also thank you for the Marketing Podcast uh, Network. <laughs> well, you're very welcome. Thank you for being a part of it. It's always good to chat with Joe, as you heard him mention as we closed out there. His daily live stream show, which is called Joseph Jaffe is Not Famous, is one of the podcasts on the Marketing Podcast Network. You should watch that show live during the day if you can. You can follow Joseph Jaffe on Facebook or go to jaffejuice.tv, which is his YouTube channel. But the audio version is available typically later the same day, if not the next day, on demand on the podcast. You can find it at marketingpodcasts.net, along with two dozen other podcasts, all suitable for your queue if you want to get smart about marketing. And yes, Winfluence is there too. One last thing before we go, and that's about Winfluence. It has come to my attention that the podcast here, folks, needs more reviews on the various podcast apps. If you listen on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or somewhere else, Please take a moment, won't you, and drop some stars in a review. It helps more people find the show. And I'm not going to ask you for five stars. Put as many as you want on there. Be honest in your review. I want the feedback more than I want the five stars. Obviously, I would love the five stars, but you you do what you do, and I'll be glad for it. Want to help make a future episode of Influence awesome? Ask your question about influence or influence marketing that you want my answer to or take on. Record a voice memo if you can. I'd love to use the recording of you asking the question on the show and send that via email. Or if you don't want to do that, just send a regular email to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comment on a future episode or your question to inspire a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the Influence Marketing Podcast, is presented by my book, Winfluence, Reframing Influencer Marketing to Ignite Your Brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. 
Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. This podcast comes to you from the Marketing Podcast Network. I'm Shell Holtz, co-host of For Immediate Release, also on NPN. I'm Neville Hobson, co-host of FIR, where since 2005, Shell and I have been exploring changing technologies, behaviors, and organizations, and what this means for you. Our monthly show takes a deep dive into these issues, and shorter episodes focus on hot topics and emerging trends. Visit marketingpodcasts.net or search for FIR Podcast wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.